Hey, thanks for joining me today for episode 29 of Business in the Bedroom, a bootstrapper's guide to doing it. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing practical advice for the newbie entrepreneur. And today I'm going to talk to you about more of Google's sweet apps. This episode is brought to you by Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. All righty, we're going to continue our conversation on Google's suite of apps and tools. So again, most of these extra Google tools that we're going to be talking about today can be found after you've logged into your Google account. You'll see a grid of nine dots in the upper left-hand corner near your profile pic. And if you click on that, you'll see a pop-up menu with these apps. Now, everything that I touched on in episode 27, which was so we kind of took a detour <laughs> with episode 28, right? But we're back to the Google Suite thing. So on episode 27, it's not the last episode, but episode 27 was the last time we talked about Google's Suite apps. Well, anyways, everything that I touched on in that episode as to why I love working in Google's tools applies to these tools we're going to cover today, too. Number one, they autosave. Number two, you can collaborate with team members on the same file in real time. Number three, you can access your files anywhere. You can log into Google. It's like a magic. <laughs> and I also love it because they don't take up precious space on your local drive. So, so many reasons beyond that. But yeah, I love this stuff. So today I want to share a few more of Google's tools because I think they're also super useful. But first, I want to share a couple of very special announcements. Number one, if you are on any of the following apps, I would love for you to follow me there as Producer Jemmy. So you can follow me at on Good Pods, the social podcasting platform, on Clubhouse, or now on Wisdom also. Those are two social audio apps. And yes, on TikTok, every social media's ratchet little sister, TikTok, I'm on there too. So if you're on any of those apps, please follow me as Producer Jemmy, remember that is spelled J-A-I-M-E. And the second announcement is that I am now co-hosting the PodFest podcast. So if you missed the other announcements, yes, PodFest Multimedia Expo is the largest independent conference for podcasters in the United States, and they've never had a podcast before. So I am super honored that they have asked Glenn the Geek from HRN and I to co-host the PodFest podcast. So on that podcast, if you're interested in podcasting, we share lots of tips from our community on on podcasting. So check it out on any of your favorite podcast players. My personal favorite is Good Pods. And number three, I am also launching my very first podcast course under Flintstone Media. So as some of you may know, I was the first ever podcast instructor for the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And now, of course, I'm co-hosting the PodFest podcast and giving out tips regularly. And of course, I've also been a producer for many, 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 many clients and help launch shows, help grow shows, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm taking all of that knowledge and now putting it together as podcast courses for you. So if you're interested in podcasting, watch for those announcements coming down the way. But links to everything will be included in the show notes. All right, so let's get on with it. Well, my new favorite tool is what I want to start with because I love this thing. I'm giddy. I'm giddy with how much I love (laughs) this next tool. Okay, so it's simply called Keep. If anyone is a fan of lists, it's me. I mean, my lists spawn lists, okay? I have lists for my lists. Like, this is all true. I have a master to-do list that's on my phone. But because I can get great ideas at any time of the day, and I don't always want to pick up my phone, because that's also known as the master of distraction, I also have a small dry erase board that I jot things down on all the time. And then a layer even above that. I have a post-it note sized paper block, non-sticky, as that is my personal preference. Every girl has the right to have a personal preference. (laughs) I like the non-sticky ones, but they're just slips of paper 
And I say plural because oftentimes I need more than one. But those slips of paper, I had my most immediate hot list of to do's written down on that. And that I carry with me everywhere. And I have, um, they usually like are clipped together with a pen, a little ballpoint pen holding my sheets of like little slips of paper together. Oh my gosh. So I'm kind of on another level when it comes to my list. I, I'm, I, I fully recognize that I have a problem and I can talk about the proper diagnosis for me at a, at a later time. Okay. But I have lists for my list. All right. So one of my new favorite tools that I discovered in the Google suite and that has become my new best friend is Keep. It's basically sticky notes on your desktop or more accurately in your browser. And I really like it because you can have them be different colors, just like real sticky notes. You can kind of organize them thematically. So all the ones about, you know, anything to do with business in the bedroom, I might have one color or anything about Florida Podcast Network, I might have another color. You see see the point. Uh, Another reason I like them is you can add, like you can title them. Well, that's pretty cool. And you can also have hot links right within the notes. So super easy. And you can also have a list in it that you can check off like a a real to-do list. Like it is so satisfying having these things (laughs) on my browser. I can't even begin to tell you. Like it's great if I'm in the middle of working on something And a great idea because I am a creative, I'm an entrepreneur, I am a shiny objects like heaven, okay? I'm shiny objects all the time. So if I'm working on something and a great idea related to something completely unrelated to what I'm working on pops up in my head, then I can just click on my tab that I, no pun intended, keep (laughs) open on my browser for keep and I can just click open a new note. And then just type down my thought and then move on with my life. It's magical. I mean, there's only so much that my brain cell real estate can have actively going on at once. All right. So to be able to like immediately release something and know that it's saved, ah, it's just so nice. But let me, let me, let me get honest. Okay. Let me, let me like fully lean back on this therapy couch for a second. And let me tell you the real reason that I love keep. And this goes to another real problem (laughs) that I suffer from. So aside from my propensity for having lists, spawn lists and growing lists and my list, having lists of lists, (laughs) I also have a really big problem with having a million browser tabs open at once. If anyone has ever had the pleasure of having me screen share during like a Zoom meeting or a Skype call or whatever has seen the monstrosity that can be and usually is my browser. Like it's ridiculous. In fact, the only time I don't have a gajillion tabs open pretty much is when I'm recording the show because I don't want it to interfere with my sound quality. This is true. But usually I have dozens of tabs open. Like it's been crazy. And when someone is in a meeting with me and they do see like a dozen tabs open, what they don't know, (laughs) my little dirty secret, is that that's just the one window that they can see. There are probably like two or three other browser windows minimized that are just as bad. (laughs) Like, just as bad. Okay. It has been a real problem. All right. But the first thing they say you have to do when you have a problem is to admit it. Right. Right. So that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing here in this safe space on my therapy couch with you guys. So yes, keep has allowed me to clean up my ridiculous number of open tabs because I can, instead of saving something open and going to it later, instead, I just have a note on keep and I just throw the URL from the browser and that's it. I just copy it, paste it into my keep tab note. (laughs) And then, and then get this. It's so satisfying. I then close that extra browser tab. It's amazing. So like if I if I'm doing research on something 
or I find a good tool that I want to share with you guys or whatever, whatever. Like when I was doing like looking up stuff for what's coming up later in this episode, I had a, a could have had <laughs> a gajillion tabs open, but I didn't because of keep. So, oh my gosh, the relief that I know I'm going to have no longer having to face the humiliation of my million browser tabs slowing my system down and being visible during Zoom meetings and Skype screen shares or whatever. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, so keep, that's the number one thing. <laughs> and that's what I, sp- I had to spend the most time on. So here we go. Number two, forms. So Google Forms is fantastic. And be honest with you, it's probably something that you've interacted with in some way, shape or form somehow (laughs) from something that someone has sent you or a landing page on a website or whatever. Like there can be a lot of reasons why you might run into a form, but there also might be a lot of reasons why you might want to create your own form. So it could be a sign up form for your newsletter, a survey or questionnaire that you send out. It could be an intake form that you use as part of your onboarding process. Like basically any reason that you have ever had to fill out a form, (laughs) that's what Google Forms can be used for. For example, I have an intake form for my podcast coaching program. So when someone signs up for my coaching program, (laughs) propodcastcoach.com, they are automatically sent an intake form to fill out. And the information that I collect on that form is very helpful for my consultation with them. It means that I'm not spending the first 10, 15 minutes of that conversation asking all those questions. They filled out the form and it's automatically sent to me. And here's here's how else why I like it. So it's really, really super, super simple and very intuitive. Like it's really easy to create a form. I'm not kidding. It's super easy. And you can break a long form into pages. So let's say you, I remember back in the day, I had this one project for a website client. So these were eviction lawyers and basically people visiting the the website could fill out this form about how horrible this tenant was and all the reasons why they needed to evict them and all the pertinent information that they needed and send it to them. So then the law firm would get this form and have a whole ton of great information for when they had this call with this potential client. So for me, I've used it the similarly with my coaching program, but it's like for that one, that was a really, 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 really long form. I think altogether it was four pages and we had to break it out. And so I was able to do it using gravity forms. So this is an alternative for that. And it's just really simple and easy to work with. So that's, that's why I really like it. So it's kind of winning me over. You know, it may be replacing some of my other things too. It's also a less overwhelming user experience than I've seen other form kind of programs use. Also, it's pretty customizable. It also logs all the responses for like future safekeeping. I can go back however long I want and see past responses for my coaching program and take form. It's pretty cool. And once you create your form, you can send it out as a link or you can put it out on a web page or whatever. Like when I say that it's unbelievably easy, it truly is. Like I like me some Google Forms. Okay. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that you've had to fill out plenty of Google Forms over the course of the last several years. And you may not have even known that it was a Google Form. It's that it's become that popular to use. The next tool I want to highlight real quick is the drawing tool. Now, it's not accessible from that little grid of dots in the upper left, at least not that I've ever seen, but it's definitely worth finding and easy to find. It's called Drawings. And Drawings is a graphics tool that you can use in place of, let's say, learning Photoshop or even using Canva, which as you've heard, I, I love me some Canva. Now, I will say <laughs> that Drawings is nowhere near as robust as either of those two programs. It's kind of like a tricycle compared to two souped up Harleys, okay? But if you want a quick infographic on a PDF or something like that, it's 
fantastic. And because it's part of the Google family, you can pull images in that you happen to drive directly into the drawing tool without having to first download it locally and take out space on your on your computer. Blah, blah, blah. So I, it's really convenient. And so to access the drawing tool, you have to be in Google Drive first, as far as I can tell. So when you click on the grid in, in the upper right-hand corner, choose Google Drive which has an icon that looks kind of like a multicolored triangle. Then once you're in Google Drive, direct your attention to the left part of your screen (laughs) and you'll see a button labeled new. And if you click on that, you'll find the three main tools that I spoke about on episode 27, docs, sheets, and slides listed, plus uh, the other major player I just talked about, forms. And then you'll also see a little line that says more. And if you hover over that, that's where you'll see the drawing tool option pop up and it's it's just really super convenient for a long time and still for a few shows for a long time i was using that exclusively for creating episode art so just one little i know this i keep dipping into podcasting com- i told y'all this is, this show is a general business show but a lot of my frames of references are going to be from what i know and that is building a, a business around podcasting sorry not sorry okay so those are the three apps i wanted to take like a deep dive into so we talked about keep we talked about forms and we talked about drawing so these next mentions are going to go a little quicker but they're worth mentioning too so sites now sites is an interesting tool <laughs> i'm honestly not sure if anybody uses it for what it's actually intended for now, it's supposed to be a website building tool. And I suppose technically it is, <laughs> but there are much better website builders out there, like much, 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 much better. But that's another conversation for another episode. But what I use Google sites for is as a production space for my podcast and my podcast clients. In fact, I was literally typing into sites to prep for this episode. It's where I keep all my production notes for all of my episodes across all the shows that I produce. Essentially how it works in short is that it's a private web space. So the only people who can access it are those that you explicitly grant access to. So in my case, my client, whomever they ask for, and then my team. So from a production perspective, it's great because my clients, my team can all see the same production notes in the same place. So if there's a scenario within your business, within your business processes, within how you work with your clients, where you think that might be something that would be useful, it could be worth exploring. And because it's a Google product, it's collaborative in real time and it also auto saves and and all the other things. So it's great for what I use it for, but I don't think I'd ever use it for what it was intended to be used for as a a website builder, but maybe you could also find your own creative use for it. The next one is Calendar. Now, it goes without saying that a lot of people use Google Calendar to get meetings and manage their time and stuff. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty much just a lot like other calendar programs. (laughs) Not a whole lot to say here. And then I also want to briefly mention podcasts. Now, Google's podcast platform is one of the most popular from a user standpoint. So people listening to podcasts, you know, it's not quite as big as like Apple or Spotify, but it's pretty much, it it is one of the go-to. So you definitely want to make sure that if you have a podcast, that your podcast is on Google and it's super easy to submit it, like super easy. You just have to be logged into the Google account, just like everything else. You just have to be logged into the Google account that you want your podcast to be registered under. And then just click the thing that says add your RSS feeds URL and then add your RSS feeds URL and you're done. (laughs) It's super simple. So if you are a podcaster trying to build a business out of their podcast, or if you are an entrepreneur who is utilizing a podcast as digital marketing, digital currency, that kind of thing, then you definitely want to add your podcast to Google Podcasts. So that's how you do it. Super, super easy. And as we get ready to wrap up this episode, I want to go through another list and make it even a faster list than the last one I just went through. So we we went through some main meat ones, then we took a little bit of a dive, and now we're just skimming the surface on the rest of these because these are other apps that I haven't really used, but I want to look more into and they might be extremely useful for you. So I don't want to overlook them. Okay. Number one, chat seems exactly as it sounds like exactly. It's just, it's a chat option. It's a chat 
program. So I haven't tried actually using it because I don't think I want to quite be that accessible. You know, having an, an active window, a chat window open and stuff like that. But I'm sure that it could be a great solution for some business owners' needs. Perhaps yours. If you have a team spread across areas, you guys are all working at the same time. You guys want chat windows open. I could see it. So Google Chat is... So from what I learned, it is a secure communications tool and it's designed to provide easy business communications within the Google Workspace ecosystem. At least that's what it says online, guys. So there'll be a link in the show notes for a really great article on Google Chat. The next one was Google Meet. It looks to me like it's a Zoom alternative. And the official byline is that Google Meet is a video chatting service designed primarily for business and office use, which lets colleagues chat over video and text. So I'll include a link in the show notes for an article about Google Meet and how you can use it. Next up, Google Currents. So Google Currents is a digital bulletin board. Sounds pretty cool. And it can help employees working at the same company chat, share files, and generally stay connected. So of course, another link in the show notes for how to use that because so far, chat, meet, and current sound very similar. But once you actually take a look at them, you see how they they differ. And I bet one of them might end up making a really good solution for you. So it's worth checking out. Next up is Hangouts. So you can use Google Hangouts for voice calls, for video calls, or text-based chat, another chat option. (laughs) And you can connect with multiple people at the same time. So to me, that also sounds similar to Zoom or StreamYard or something of that nature. Again, I'll include a link to an article that talks about Google Hangouts. And the last one on this quick hit list here is Jamboard. Now, this is very similar to something that I heard about when I was a recent guest on a friend's show. Carrie Zarb had me on her show, Coffee with Carrie, and we were talking about like literally all kinds of stuff, (laughs) just all over the place. It was one of my most fun (laughs) guesting experiences ever. I do highly recommend it. And if you are using Good Pods, um, if you click on my face and you go to my profile, then you can see it on my list of shows where I've been a guest on. You can see the episode right there. But one thing that we realized during our conversation is that we're both very visual organizers. I think we were talking about actually my dry erase boards or my ridiculous problem with statisizing lists or whatever. I don't know. But she ends up mentioning the software called Coggle. Now, this is not a Google software, right? But she mentioned a software called Coggle that she uses. So while we were in the midst of this, I was like, ooh, I was very interested, you know, me and shiny objects. So I immediately looked it up and it looks really Really awesome. So I am going to include a link to Coggle specifically as well in the show notes, okay? And a link to her show, Carrie, a Coffee with Carrie as well, of course. But Google Jamboard looks very, very similar. So imagine being able to kind of draw out your thoughts on a classic dry erase board. That's kind of what it is. You know, you could draw things, lines to things and circles around stuff and ideas over here. Da, da, da. And so that's I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> that's what it looks like. And so it's a very visual way of, of organizing it. So anyways, it's Google's cloud based app and it enables visual collaborations between users in real time. So I will also be including a link in the show notes about how to use Google Jamboard, because it really does look pretty cool. So as I mentioned, Chat, Meet, Currents, Hangout, and Jamboard are all tools that I haven't personally used yet. So what I've done is I found some great articles that break each one down, and you'll find those all in the show notes. So if I ever do check any of those out, (laughs) I will certainly share my personal feedback on a future episode. Thanks for tuning into the podcast today. I'm assuming you're listening to this because you're either running a business in your bedroom or you're thinking about it. So I and your fellow listeners want you to be part of our conversation. So pop into Clubhouse. We support each other's dreams and goals and I answer questions on the regular. And we're never short of being super blessed with the connections that people make in those rooms, needing each other for like just the right thing professionally. It's pretty awesome. So look for the Dreamers Become Doers Club on Clubhouse. 
And as I mentioned, if you are on any of the following apps, Clubhouse being one of them, but also Good Pods, Wisdom, and also TikTok, I would love for you to follow me there as producer Jemmy, spelled J-A-I-M-E. I would also really be flattered if you would check out my other show, my new show, the PodFest podcast, available on your favorite podcast player. Mine, of course, is Good Pods. And I'm also launching my very first podcast course under the Flintstone Media brand. Yay, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> watch for details. Watch for details. Watch for for details and be sure to last mention here be sure to also now find the dreamers become doers group on the good pods app too basically follow me on good pods follow me on clubhouse follow me on wisdom follow me on tiktok listen to the Podfest podcast and we'll be good to go <laughs> and any feedback that you'd like to give or any ways that you'd like to connect please do follow me on social media and go to bizinthebedroom.com. That's B-I-Z in the bedroom.com. And remember to hit it hard. Keep the lights on. Flintstone Media has been the digital messaging bedrock of several brands and businesses, serving as a highly resourceful podcast production house and consultancy firm for over six years. Work with a leader in the industry and add a new podcast to your brand's content offerings. From show development and setup through recording and distribution, Jemmy will lend her experience launching dozens of podcasts and producing over a thousand episodes, making creating your show a simple and easy turnkey process for you. Visit FlintstoneMedia.com for podcast samples. That's FlintstoneMedia.com. Mm-hmm.